Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be for you, and welcome to another Daisy super detailed guide. This time, we're on Livonia. I was thinking with the, the news that with 1.25 update, Livonia will no longer be DLC once that update goes live and stable. Hopefully some of my more favorited servers for Livonia, my favorite map as it goes on Daisy, will become more populated, including this one, Day 1 Livonia. If you're on PC, I highly recommend it. It's very, very vanilla. There are no bases, actually, on these servers. And for full transparency, it was the only Livonia server with a little bit of population, and which was at this time of the day. So I, I didn't want it to be dark. But really what we're thinking about this is getting a few of these guides done and released over the coming Sundays, hopefully leading up to the 1.25 update. So then if you're new to Livonia, new to Daisy, you can recognize some of these spawns. Now this one's pretty easy. We're in Gliniska. Okay, I've played this map for hundreds and hundreds of hours, maybe a thousand hours on Xbox and PC. When I spawned in, I was looking at this train station. Now there are a few of these around the map, as you would imagine. You will spawn in the north. It's the opposite of Chinaris on Livonia. See the train track? Now what I would always do is spin around. Can we see any really big landmarks? Oh, there's the prison. So if you look at your map, I survive, you'll see a prison. It's not called Gliniska Prison, but it's close to the river, close to the town of Gliniska. And when you get used to Livonia and looking around for the landmarks, particularly when it's a nice clear day like this, as soon as you see the prison, great, I'm by Gliniska. So let's start looting up. If you're starting on this server or an official server, you'll be yellow water, yellow food, probably blue temperature. You won't get a small stone like this on official. That's one of the perks of playing day one. So we can craft a stone knife pretty much straight away. But of course, I'm looking for better insulation. Mosin ammo is ridiculous. But we'll take a hoodie straight off the rip. And we may even keep our t-shirt because I can cut that into rags once I get myself a blade. If you've seen my other guides, you want to start getting the ability to be able to fish as quick as you can. And you can do that by finding rope or by crafting your own out of two stacks of six rags. If you, sp if you spawn in the field like I just did, loot the train station, look for any more small stones along the track. No, there can be a military train convoy spawn right along those tracks. So always look there because you can get some nice juicy early loot. But if you're like me and you don't get that luck, cross the bridge and head towards Gliniska. And as long as we don't get attacked by some chads and killed, which can happen in Daisy, I'll show you all the points of interest of Gliniska. And then I'll give you maybe one option, particularly if you're new to Livonia, of where you might want to go next. Now, there's a player. See, I'm pretty brave, so I'd like to go for the prison straight away, get some guns. But you might just want to carry on exploring the north, this side of the river, as we're crossing the bridge. And if we have to talk to this guy and establish whether they're going to attack us or not, that's the beauty of Daisy. You never know what's going to happen until it happens. They looked somewhat fresh. Oh, look at that food. Straight off the rip, some rice. But you don't know. They could come in swinging on us, you know. Some slugs. We've only got a small stone that we could use. Take the hip pack. I don't need the map, but by all means, grab it if you do, if you're new to Livonia. Maybe this guy's avoiding us. Maybe he saw us. He was running right to left. Looked like he was going into the log cabin, but... Hello. Hello. How you doing, dude? Always speak. Cool. Always speak. Have you uh, recently spawned, or you been alive a while? No, I've been in for a while. I've been in for a while, man. What's what's your plans, man? You you on your way to the prison or what? I'm just looting. I'm just trying to. Get out of this town. I got. I've looted this town. I'm trying to leave. That's all. 
Nice, dude. Yeah, I just want to know where to not bother, not bother going, you know? So if there's no loot left, see him pointing his gun yeah, at me. Yeah, um, I mean, you could go back in there. I mean, there's no police station in Glenska. But nah, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a medical, there. isn't there? There's only a medical and two wells, so. Exactly, exactly. Nice and friendly you're looking there, bro. You. I'm not going <laughs> to shoot you. This is just a precautionary thing. I don't trust everyone in this game. Dude. Nah, you probably best not to. Precaution. Starts with the same letter as paranoia. <laughs> I'm, I'm going left at the river here. I don't know which way you're going. So yeah, you go. You go then, bro. You go. All right, man. I want... All right, I'm not going to shoot. You don't shoot me, all right, dude? Shoot, shoot you with my bandage. I, I just spawned in the field behind you. <laughs> what, what do you got on your back there? It's a baseball bat. I mean, I could probably... Oh, okay. I could probably slug you to death if you keep talking shit like that, you know? But it's, it's up to you. Yeah, I got a double barrel shotgun. Yeah, don't miss then. Make, sh make sure you don't miss. <laughs> oh, I got other guns too, man. Don't it, worry. It only takes two hits with the baseball bat. You be, you be good night, sweetheart. <laughs> Daisy 2024, ladies and gentlemen. So for the purposes of the video, I'm not going to try it on. Double barrel shotgun. If he's got it on a double shot, even a paranoid goober like that could land it. We've got no protection. You know, it's good. Good night, Irene. So we're going to carry on looting. We found a leather kit and a bag, which is brilliant. And this guy said, I've looted the whole town. There's nothing here. I'm looking to move on. Well, we found a leather kit straight away that he's walked past. Maybe he's already got one. I don't know. If I walked into this and found a gun, would I go for him? Maybe. If you watch the streams, you're a regular to the channel. You know, as a fresh spawn with nothing to lose, nine times out of ten, having found a baseball bat, I would definitely have attacked that dude. But we'll leave him be if he comes back and shoots us. That's his prerogative. I just want to show you Gleniska for the purposes of this video. Keep on looting. We got ourselves a bag. We've got ourselves a blade as well now. Without having to make a stone knife, we have found a hatchet. Super paranoid that guy was though, wasn't he? I don't blame him. And we're going to take a chance here. He could come back and kill us. But we're going to make our... First set of rags. I don't know whether I'm going to turn them into hand wraps yet. Just for now, I'm going to pocket the three rags. I'm going to eat my zagoki bar to keep my arrows going up. The longer you stay in the yellow food and drink, and if you're not in white temperature, we're okay on temperature, but the longer you stay in the yellow, the more chance you've got of getting an early sickness, a cold, and it's quite difficult to shake. Not impossible. But so you want to eat every item of food and drink as soon as you can. 357, that's nice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a good way of getting some early food and drink and goodies. If you've got a bladed weapon like this, always use that on the zombies. Don't use the blunt weapons. Blunt weapons are very good on players, but not zombies. So if you've got a hatchet or a knife, always use that on a zombie. Power attack to the head. Power attack to the head. Good night, Irene. This time, nothing on the zombie. But don't be afraid. If you can keep them in ones, singulars, singular zombies, kill as many as you can. A, it gets the practice in. You're going to be needing to fight a lot of zombies in a zombie apocalypse game. Don't be afraid of the zombies. Also, treat them as resources. Potential for resources. Right? We aggro this guy. We're looking around, keeping our head on a swivel. There's no other zombies coming. There's no players, hopefully, watching us stand still so we, this guy could get an easy shot. And there you go. Sewing kit. Pocket it. We're not going to sort our loot out just yet. I want to keep on my toes when there's a player with multiple guns, as he warned us. We're going to keep going up the hill, scouting ahead. We can see there are a lot of zombies in town, and there are a lot of zombies around the medical. I know the layout of the town. I'm going to show you where the medical is. Oh, this guy was cooking. More food. 
Stuff has either started respawning because me and him were far enough away for it to start respawning again. Or this guy had so much food, he just walked past that and uh, didn't need it. We're going to have a server restart in 10 minutes, so I will pause the video and pick it back up. Oh my word. Pick it back up when we're ready to roll. More ranks, more shotgun ammo. Surely this guy didn't leave all that there. This IJ looks empty. But of course, if we could find some ammo for it. Beautiful. I'm going to check this shed. And like I say, I'll pause it on the restart. And when, as soon as I get back in, I'll resume the recording. So it might be a little bit stuttery. Not the most perfect editor by, by any means. We're going to take the rider jacket purely for the drip. Keep looting. But we don't want to go running up into the town. If you get yourself in the position where there's two, three, four zombies chasing you, you're going to be in big trouble. You're right, look at this now. I've aggroed two zombies. They're coming in from different directions. I'm immediately getting back. I want to be able to get two big head swings in on this guy and hopefully drop him before his mate realizes where we even are. You know, timed it poorly. But we timed it just enough to kill one and immediately start blocking and fighting the other one. There were other options in that situation. If they both come charging at the same time, we could have looked to trap them in a building. But it just worked out that we could put one down before the other one was on us. Just. It now clears the path to this, what I would call, attic house. So we'll check if there's anything in it. This other guy who said he fully looted the town. Yeah, we've done nothing but find loot so far. Remember, oh, salt boots are nice for insulation. A bit louder than sneakers, though, so be ready to aggro more zombies if you change from sneakers to boots. But it's just a preference thing for me. I like them. I'm going to go back down here where I saw those battered jumpsuit pants because I forgot we're still in the market for rags. And these jumpsuit pants should give us enough rags to be able to craft our own rope. Now we're only a hook away from being able to fish. Maybe, okay, another blade. Um, okay. We'll have to cut this up as well. Then we'll be sweet. I'm looking at my water. It's yellow. I'm not too worried because there are two wells in the vicinity. Very close, actually. Don't know what happened with those rags just then, but we're going to go like this. Combine six rags with another stack of six rags. You should get the prompt to create rope. Rope can be made into a temporary makeshift fishing rod. So now we either need a legitimate rope, a uh, legitimate hook, or we need to turn a person into bones or a chicken. Any other animal that we can skin will give us bones. Get some hand wraps so we don't accidentally eat or drink with bloody hands. They're not the best, but they're better than nothing. And I'm going to, instead of hopping the fence, I'm going to go into stealth mode. Go crouched. I could have hopped the fence here, right, the wall, and there would be three zombies there. And I'd be in big trouble. <laughs> so I'm going to creep. There's no gap in this wall until back down here, this fence. I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to assume I'm new at Daisy, like you, if you are new. And I'm going to stay crouched. I'm sort of crouch sprinting. There you go. See? Now I know the lay of the land. Seems to be a clear shed back here. Nothing in it. Just double check. No one stashed anything. I can hear it. See that zombie there? If we go sprinting around everywhere, we're just going to aggro them all. You want to fight them 1v1 if you can. Regenerate your stamina before you go and fight the next one. That one had a bag if we hadn't already found one. So we've seen where he is as the rain starts falling on Livonia. Let's approach cautiously. Because we want to loot the house and the shed he's in the vicinity of. Two strikes in before he can even react. Third one puts him down. He's got the goods. Duct tape sardines. Back in crouch mode because I can hear one very, very close. Could be just the other side of the shed. 
or even the other side of this fence. So I don't want to go stomping around with my military boots. There you go. I want to take him on at my pace, on my terms. Immediately opening my food. I want to keep the arrows on food and drink going in the right direction. And sardines will do that for both. We've got duct tape now. If we want to make an improvised bottle suppressor or fix up our clothes or our bag. The sardines are nice. That's even nicer. We've now got a working weapon. Loaded with, what, five shots? It's worn. The mag's damaged. It might jam on us. But it's something to protect ourselves with. Or we'll make a move on someone. I'd love to run into that goober again back there. <laughs> More rounds for the IJ. Wow, this is good. Just before the restart, we can settle on in. Whoop, Daisy being Daisy. Settle on in to this little humble abode. Do not sit on a magazine with only four bullets in it when you've got more bullets in your pocket, for God's sake. There's nothing worse than killing a player and then realizing they had a gun on them which wasn't loaded or not loaded fully. I almost feel like they're bringing it upon themselves, the death, for not being fully prepared. If you get outgunned, you just get blasted. It is what it is. But don't make silly mistakes you regret later. Look what we've got here. Blue medical. Right next to that blue medical is the well which is going to put our hydration up into the white. Usually absolutely packed and surrounded by zombies, though. You do not want to be sprinting up this main road. But we have got the rainfall now as our friend. It will disguise our footsteps. I'm looking. Has that guy doubled back to stalk us? Didn't sound like he was going to. And I'm looking. The path of least resistance to this well. It's going to be risky, crouching in front of it, stationary, drinking. Take the tetracycline as well. If we do get a cold, we've got a way of fixing it now. And let's just drink, probably until the restart kicks us out of the server. Because it says three minutes, but sometimes they can close down a bit before the warning they give you. Then obviously we want to loot the medical. We've already found three tetracycline pills which will cure a common cold or even a stage 2 cold and a wound infection if you were to be unlucky enough to get one. We've also got alcohol which can cure that. Notice how my head's on a swivel. Even though Daisy is being Daisy, allowing you to look through your own invisible head, it is what it is. Always keep looking around while you're drinking because I'd be the first one to creep up and try and take advantage of someone being stationary drinking at a well. So I'll see you on the other side of the restart. Alright, we're loading back in. Hopefully that little bit of non-editing doesn't disturb your viewing pleasure. It's still raining. Looks like sunny showers and we're still drinking with our head on a swivel. Good thing about a server restart is for some reason there must be a mechanic, a reason for this. But when you load back in, it tends to take the zombies out. Definitely in your immediate vicinity. So take advantage of that as we're full. Don't want to over drink. See that stomach symbol in the bottom left? Next to the yellow water bottle. Carry on eating or drinking when you see that twisted stomach symbol. And you will vomit all the good stuff up. And have to pretty much start over again. More tetracycline. I'm going to quickly loot this. I'm shutting the doors behind me, so I'll get an audio notification, if you like, if somebody's coming in, and an audi audible warning if somebody comes in behind me, so I can at least respond, bring the bat out, bring the gun. Epinephrine is nice. Odin pills for recovery is nice. So with the EpiPen, when I get one, I always hot bar it. If I get in a sticky situation, I can inject myself in the leg with the with the EpiPen. And my stamina bar, the bottom left there, will not deplete for 60 seconds. So I can really hard flank someone or 
just run away from someone if we're massively outgunned. Can of beans is huge. Always search the cars in the vicinity of this medical. Some of them will actually spawn medical loot. There you go. Charcoal tablets in case you get sick or you want to fill up a gas mask. Now what I'm going to do, you don't have to do this, but this is just a preference thing. Giving you my own little personal tips. I'm going to go prone in this bush. Risky business, potentially. But I like to have a little bit of order in my inventory. A shotgun would be good now. Maybe a little revolver, a Mosin would be huge. Put that on my bag. Keep some immediate medical supplies in my hip, hip pack for now. Tracksuit pants will keep the rest of our medical supplies. Okay, I'm not going to take the charcoal tabs. I don't need them. I grabbed them a bit uh, quickly, if you like there. We're going to put the gun up here. We're going to leave that there. We're going to put that there. If you've watched me play DayZ for a while, you know I keep things pretty much in the same place at all times. So I just know where stuff is if I need to access it. And I would, I would pass that tip on to you and, and suggest you use it. You don't have to follow the same one as me. But I have ammo and guns, at the, ammo and pistols at the top. Medical supplies in the pants or hip pack. Utility down the bottom and food usually. Maybe a water bottle I might keep in the pants. It depends on what item of clothing you're wearing and how much capacity I've got. So let's get the beans down us. No point carrying food. It fills up your inventory. It weighs you down so you can't sprint for long or as long. And you want to fill up your food and your water as quickly as possible and keep it filled as high in the white as possible to avoid sickness. Tire iron is a good melee, but we've already got a bat, a bat and a hatchet. So really I'm just looking for a bit of extra food or even some ammo or a secondary pistol to the IJ. Maybe a better IJ magazine, one that's not damaged. I'm constantly looking up and down the road though. Can I see somebody sprinting in and out of houses like we did early doors with the guy that was cooking? Private paranoid back there. Let's put the hat on. Beautiful shade of pink. We don't care. Of course, I find a can opener as soon as I've hatcheted my beans open. But I'm putting anything on my head and my extremities. Regardless of drip, you can always go for fashion later on in your run. But for now, I want the insulation. I want to stay in the white. Again, stay away from the illnesses. Even though we've got Tetra, you don't want to invite an illness in Daisy. Because even with Tetra, the illness will take a while to go away, and in the interim, you'll be sniffing and sneezing and giving away your position, therefore sacrificing some of your ability to be stealthy. Search these toilet blocks thoroughly by tabbing in. Sometimes stuff can be hidden, so just tab in. It'll tell you in the vicinity if something's there. We found a pristine fishing hook. We've got rope. We've got a blade. Another blade or two would be nice. We have got a small stone we can combine with a boulder to make a stone knife. So now we have the ability to fish 20 odd minutes into the life. I'm fairly confident now that I'm not going to die of starvation. Definitely for the next hour or two. Because if I started getting really unlucky and not finding a scrap of food... I can go back down to that river which runs all along the north of Livonia and I can fish for my supper. Probably catch a couple of fish before my hatchet ruined and my stone knife ruined. But like I say, let's hope we can find a blade or two to top that up. Notice we're going uphill. I've deviated left and right to loot. There's the prison on the hill. The massive landmark that will show you that you are in and you have spawned in the vicinity of Gleniska. Again, thoroughly search... Oh, look at that. Thoroughly search the toilet block. We find a machete. That machete can come the, become the primary and it can also dig up worms for our fishing bait. It can help gut the fish. We're in dreamland. We're finding food everywhere. We're positively exploding with food. It may have something to do with the lower population on this server. There were about 15 people on when I joined. Don't overeat. We'll keep that rice while that twisted stomach symbol is there. But 
you know, we had a nice little interaction, interesting interaction at the beginning. Could have gone south. I just want to sh you to get the layout of Gleniska really, rather than the PvP, etc, etc. If it happens, it happens. You can loot all this if you want to, but quick tip on a, a lot of my guide videos, particularly the de super detailed ones, I've said to you, haven't I? Don't overstay your welcome, whether it's looting a body, a person you've just killed or found. And whether it's in the spawn town. That guy said, I've been trying to get out of this town for ages. Well, why? You look like you're super stacked, dude. Just leave. Because this is a spawn area. Other freshies will spawn in. And if they find a pistol or a baseball bat, like we have, they might think, let's have a go at this guy. Let's try and take all his stuff and get a really quick snowball come up. So I'm not going to loot probably any more houses. I just want to show you a couple of points of interest and the way you could go next. So you come up here, big part of Gliniska now. The busy part. There's another well. Happy days if you need some water. See how close the two wells are? You're not going to thirst to death in Gliniska. Now if you go left and you follow the main road, you will end up in Topolin eventually. It's a hell of a way though. So I'll show you the way to Brenner for the purposes of this video and I'll show you all the key points of interest you want to loot on the way and we'll leave Brenner itself for another guide video but you can connect the dots okay if I can see the prison on the hill I'm near Gleniska there's the airfield over there which is gassed you need an NBC to loot that airfield for all the goodies but I know if I spawn in that field where COD did, we go up the hill, past the medical, past the two wells, swing a right, and I literally can't go wrong if I follow the main road. I will eventually end up in Brenner. And obviously, you can start doing the vice versa. If I spawn in Brenner, oh, I can follow that road and I can eventually get to the town which has the prison overlooking on the hill. That prison's got some juicy loot. Now look what, it, look what the benefits of scanning ahead give you. Seven zombies, you could throw a blanket over them. No thanks. <laughs> we're going to swoop that. We're going to stick to this field, but we're going to check it out. Oh, look. A couple, uh, couple of dudes chilling in the field. Now, we could stealth kill them now we've got a machete. It's a bit risky crouching. But let's, let's recap on stealth killing. You've got to be crouched. You've got to get behind the zombie with the blade in your hand. Click right trigger, then click left. And you've got to get lucky. Or well, the game will sometimes throw you a curveball. Or food. This guy's not the sharpest. Oh, we got daisy there. They didn't register my hit, but he's dead anyway. This lovely lady wants to get involved. That's fine. We got a can of sar uh, spaghetti out of that. We're staying wide. I saw all those zombies around that hut. But I want to loot that hunting stand. So I'm keeping it in mind. But I'm not running down the street. Taking on a fight with seven zombies. Suicide. Crazy. Even if you survive it by trapping the zombies. All your gear is going to get banged up. Maybe ruined. You might get two or three bleeds. You might run out of bandages. It's just not fun times. Hunter pants are nice. We're definitely going to take those if we can. 22 ammo. Which for once has gone in the right area. Nice. What's this? Oh, hunter jacket. Do you know what? We're going to switch out. We're going to go full hunter jacket, hunter pants. Look at the capacity. 42 slots compared to our jackets. 30. A little bit pedantic doing all this, but we're going to do it. Pick up the pants. Come back inside. Whoops. Daisied on the door. Quickly use our duct tape to make them from damaged to worn. So they'll give you the full insulation, which I believe is best insulation. Yep. Same as the jacket. It's only the hat that's letting us down. And again, these pants have four more slots. Plus they're not bright blue. They're not showing you up asking you to be shot wearing bright, bright blue pants. Next point of interest is off on the main road, actually. Now, if, you, if you don't want to get too lost through the industrial or fight too many zombies, by all means, stay on the main road. 
Don't be surprised if you bump into a player though. And keep your eye out. When you pass a gap in the in the uh, wall, zoom in. If you're on PC, press down the mouse wheel. Zoom in. You might catch a glimpse of someone sprinting from building to building. Do it occasionally in the open fields as well. And definitely do it ahead of where you're walking. I want to go here. This spawns military loot. Has the potential to. So does the car next to it. So do not neglect this car. There you go. See? Handcuffs. Box of 380 for our IJ. Wonderful. I'm not going to load it up here though. A pump action shotgun. All day, every day. And just because we're next to it, we're going to search this shed. Search it thoroughly by tabbing in on PC. Just so you don't miss anything. Take the scarf for the insulation. I'm not going to fix it up here though. I would rather load my guns up, fix my stuff up, sort my inventory out, and even eat food if you're not doing it while you're walking. Like a bag of rice you can just eat, but a can of spaghetti, I'm going to have to go stationary to open it. So I'm going to be doing that in a bush, and that's my top tip to you. AK ammo. We can easily light a fire now with the flare if we want to go fishing and cook it up. Quick scoot through here. Nothing at all. I'll take the 380 as a win. But again, I'm not loading it there next to a little police shack where everyone and their mother is going to want to loot because they want to find some 380 as well. But nothing wrong with opening it while you're walking. You'll get better at doing this if you're brand new to Daisy. Multitasking. I don't want the paper from the bullets. I'll drop them on the floor automatically. But while I'm approaching this, why not pull out my gun, remove the mag, press 2 to put my gun away again, put the mag in my hand, press R while I'm walking to reload it fully, press 2 to bring the gun out again, hold R to put the mag in, and then put the gun away to not look menacing, all before we got to the next building, fully loaded, but we didn't stop. Oh, excellent, look at this. More mows and ammo. And some ballistic protection that we can immediately fix up from damage to worn. And I am contradicting myself by fixing this up in a point of interest. Because I want it worn as quick as humanly possible. In case we get immediately pushed into a gunfight down this road. Hopefully not. We did pick up the pump action shotgun and it looks loaded. Now I should have checked that earlier than I just did. We've got one shot in it. What I'm going to do is double click, double press R on the keyboard. Look, oh, it's a red slug. Okay, so we know it's a buckshot that, we've, that we're firing. We don't have to be too accurate like we do with the greens. Just for now, I'm going to quickly put it on three. Put it on my back so I'm not walking around with a gun in my hand looking like I'm looking for a fight. And I'm actually going to drop the baseball bat. Because now with a pump action shotgun and an IJ which is full with spare ammo, I'm not likely to get into what I would call a freshy fight. Fist on fist, melee on melee. Baseball bats are no good A few uh, on zombies a few updates ago. They're better than nothing, but they made blunt weapons pretty poor on Zeds. Like I said earlier, you want to use a sharp object, a bladed article on a zombie, such as the machete we're brandishing on our hot bar at the moment and when I'm far enough away from Gleniska and I'm sort of in the middle of nowhere we're gonna go prone again and I want to move the ammo up to my ballistic vest because I always like the ammo oh I forgot we had green slugs there we go we're gonna fully load the shotgun keep that for a temp you know an emergency blade I'm actually gonna keep the pistols down there I can keep some food there now as well let's let's get rid of this rice Get it off our inventory. Get it off our carry weight. And while we're sort of in the middle of nowhere, we'd have to be very unlucky for someone to step on us now. They would literally have to step on us accidentally. Open the green slugs. Put them back in our inventory. So when the gun is in our hands and we hold R on PC, it will reload it until full. We've got a red slug chambered, so we could hip fire someone. We'd have a really good chance of killing them. And then when we rechamber the next one, I know in my mind now, 
its green slugs after the first shot. So then we have to be more accurate. Green traje projectiles will fire straight. Buckshot is obviously going to spread in a certain diameter and give you more chance of hitting your shot. But I know in my mind now I've got buckshot and behind it I've got five green slugs and we've got plenty of change. If we get in a stupid long gunfight and I potato like there's no tomorrow, we might need them ready. So we're going to get them open. We're going to open our spaghetti. Again, I don't like carrying food. It's unnecessary weight, unnecessary spaces in our inventory. But now it's open, I can stand up and we can walk while we eat. Keeping our head on a swivel, occasionally zooming ahead. And I'm keeping to the trees. I know where the road is. I'm not going to get lost. Look, I can see the road. Even if I'm a brand new player. But I ain't walking out in that open field asking to get sniped. i am just got enough cover. So if someone took a shot at us now and they missed, woof, I'm off. I'm off into the trees. Maybe I can pop my EpiPen in a bush. And then just scarper or reposition if I feel I want to take the fight on. But very importantly, if I scan through the trees, if someone is hugging the road, coming down that road, there's a good chance we'll see them through the foliage before they see us. And then again, we can make a decision. Do we just run out and say, friendly, friendly, how you doing? Do we try and position ourselves on the edge of the road to ambush them? Or do we just run away if they look super geared? It's up to you. But it's nice to have the option, isn't it? Instead of just being seen walking up the middle of an open road and just getting blasted on hoping that the other guy is going to be friendly I'd like to be the one with the options to be honest so yeah sometimes I'll poke my head out if you're a new player and you've come from Gliniska you're trying to follow this guide video and almost replicate it and get to Brenner where we're going to end this guide so I don't want to step on too many toes of a Brenner guide video don't be surprised if it feels like, my God, have I have I gone too far? This this road seems very long. It is very long. But we're just enjoying the Livonia scenery. Our ping is not great because it's a US server, but I'm hoping the quality is still decent enough for you guys. Let me know in the comments. So you'll get to this road sign. Now, now be aware that you're not actually that far away from Brenner because there's a fork in the road. You can get a police crash convoy spawn there with lots of goodies so beware you might have five or six zombies to kill before you can loot the police cars also people will want that loot as well and in the fork in the road you're going to hug the right hand side okay again we're staying in the trees maybe we poke our head out to see if someone's coming but the buildings you can see now are on the periphery of Brenner so you're learning your first route if you're brand new to Livonia brand new to Daisy You've spawned in Gliniska. You can see the prison up on the hill. You're learning your first route. You can join the dots now between Gliniska and Brenner. Brenner to Gliniska. In terms of points of interest, this town that we're approaching has a police station, a PD. It has two wells like Gliniska, and it has a medical building. Let me think. It has a little gas station that you can almost make out see where those concrete barriers are there's a gas station just behind behind the trees there and there are some military containers military tents all these points of interest mean that on most servers Brenner can be a bit of a shit show it can be very popular I fished here quite a few times a nice little pond what I would do is I would come around here I put myself way away from the main road I'd get all the sticks and the long stick I need for my temporary fishing rod and I'd put myself in the reeds I could you could even go a bit further now if you put yourself in the bush here and fish you'll probably notice before they do if someone runs from Gliniska into Brenner or if they leave from Brenner to Gliniska do we abandon our fishing and now suddenly go and stalk another player that decision is yours of course now, if you enjoy these detailed, I mean, it's not super, super detailed today. I hope I've explained every thought process. 
that. But if you like the fact that we're jumping to Livonia because Livonia is no longer going to be DLC once 1.25 drops, let me know in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe. We obviously stream usually Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. UK time. Usually drop videos, whether it's Daisy, Zomboid or anything else. A midweek video and usually a Sunday video. You'll be seeing these. I hope you enjoy them. I'll probably F11 after this video and hope to not get a Glenisca spawn next time. And you can expect to see a good few super details, beginner guides to this beautiful map that is Livonia. Hopefully, see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.